say, what is the line of best fit in order to transfer the text? Alright, so the important things are, what is a line of best fit? What is it used for? Is it always appropriate? And how do I create one mathematically? That's where we need to get to. Uh, so I think a lot of you already know a line of best fit and draw a line through it, yeah? That yes? Yeah? Alright, well that's not very mathematical. That's a line of best fit, uh, a line of fit by R. And that is a generalized kind of a, a way of dealing with the relationship, but we are going to eventually look at how we can do it in a more mathematical way. Right? Because after a point, um, doing it by eye just doesn't cut it. Uh, I hope you're not still working on your new project thing. No? Stubby sheet of paper and So, does anyone already know what a line of best fit is? No? Because if you don't, it's good to hear. A line that you draw through uh, all the points on the board. A line that you draw through all the points on the board. Okay? Does that make sense? Any other way to describe any adding you want to do to that? Let me hand up on this. Okay, so just you added a word there about linear. Is a line of best fit linear? Is it a straight line that, that you are talking about? Okay, it doesn't have to be. Okay, so I really like to come on to you can focus on the paper and then I'll let you get on with being on the sheet. Okay, so a line of best fit, um, it actually doesn't be a straight line, but the ones we're looking at at the moment are straight lines. We are looking at linear relationships at the moment, right? So we're looking at adding a line of best fit to our scatter plots. Can you switch that off again? Yeah, I know you're trying to get on with something, but there's a time and a place. All right, what's it used for? Why bother? Represents the trend today. Why would you want to represent it with a line? See, I would argue that you can see that without the, the line of that. Because if you just see the dots, you can see whether it's positive or negative anyway, right? Any other reasons? So it's just used like Penzi then, it's just used to show the shape. Even if it's not curved. Is there anything else you can think of? So when you say show the average, what do you mean by that? Okay. I think we're getting starting to get a bit closer. So there is a word that we when we're doing statistics something we want to actually be able to do. Do you know why we study statistics at all? Why, why do people do it? It's not just using scatter plots. Anyone know why we do statistics? Predict, yeah. If we can look at what's happening around us and notice any trends or anything, we can start making some predictions about what we should do in the future. You, you all know about weather and things like that. How do we know what's going to happen? Well, yeah, but satellites can only look at what is happening. How do we know what's going to happen? So we look at what has happened in different seasons of the year in the past. We look at what happened with certain temperatures. We look at what happened with certain wind patterns. And we can make a prediction based on that. You know, of course, that if you try and predict too far in the future, it's not so good, right? How many times have we been um, told that a hurricane is going to hit Bermuda in two weeks' time and then actually when it's due to be a nice sunny day? We've kind of had that 
it's kind of been 300 miles off the east of here. Because we can only predict up to a certain point. Now with our scatter plot, we're doing that. It's, it's data has been collected. And we're going to introduce words like extrapolation and interpolation in the future. But it's all about making a prediction. And our line of best fit is about making a prediction. Right. Is it always appropriate to draw a line of best fit for this? What do you think? Anyone? Say no. Any reason why not? Well, again, I would say we could see without like, a line. A line is used for making predictions. But is there any time when you're looking at the graph already and you can already see that there's like no point drawing one. Exactly that. If you've already decided there's no correlation, you don't put a line of best fit, right? Actually, for assessments and things, if you get, if you do, like I said, was an idea, and I said, right, I want you to do an analysis of some data, and you have a scatter plot where all your points are plotted all over the place, and you still try and draw a line of best fit in because that's what you've always done. Actually, that's not that's not a good thing. You need to know when it's appropriate. So when there's no correlation, we shouldn't be doing a line of best fit. It's a bit pointless. When is it okay to do one, but it's not very useful? Wrong place to draw a line of best fit. Okay. Yeah, good. When it's not such a strong correlation, the line of best fit won't be so useful for making predictions. Okay? And how do I create one mathematically? Well, that's something we're going to start looking at today. Uh, let's just look at these graphs. So I don't think the lines came out on your printout, but they are. This has come from one of the exercises in the best fit system. So I think it's this question is. Do you think these are good lines of best fit? So, let's just have a quick look. Do you think this one here, A, is a good line of best fit? Right? Everyone agree? What's your reasoning for that? Yeah, it goes through the middle of the book. Is it, how many points does a line of best fit have to go through? Many is actually go through the points. Oh. It's actually one point, and it's called the mean point. And we're not going to talk about that today. But until we talk about the mean point, actually, it doesn't have to go through any points. It just has to represent the data. All right? So it goes roughly through the middle of the points. So in this one, what do you think about this line of best fit? Um, so this one's quite good, we think. Um, this one's not so good. What do you think about this one? Even worse. We're really not happy with that one. This one? Good. Good. Okay. Okay. I think the next on the other side. So what I want you to do. For those four that you've got on the front, I would like you, one, I think two of them are fine, two of them are wrong. I actually just want you to make all four of them correct, line of best fit. Using a pencil, using a ruler, so don't tick this cross, because your lines haven't shown up yet, yeah? So you need to draw the lines of best fit. So this one is a good example of what to do, this one is a good example of what to do, these two are wrong. So can you replicate those two and change those two in your sheet for me. So 2A, hopefully you put a line, I don't know, I would put mine somewhere like that. Right? Now, the thing is, with a line of best fit by eye, yours might actually be better than mine. 
just so I'm not lying a rumour on mine. You'll, don't look at mine, well, mine's slightly different, I must be wrong. As long as your line is kind of going in the same sort of way, and it's kind of representing the data well, you're all good. Uh, this one, kind of maybe go like this. So what you, whether you agree or not, I, I think it's not too bad. Uh, this one, C, well, if a good comment was made, should we even do one for this one? What do you think? Compared to, do you think there is um, a relationship going? Yeah. Very slight one, yeah. Very weak correlation, but there is one. So we could still argue that even with a weak positive correlation, we could still do a line. Uh, let's stick something up like that. So you can see, well, that's one of the questions, I guess. Same with this one, right? This is a definite correlation, even though the, the points are not very well distributed around it. Um, now, first question, important one, actually. And I'll refer you back to, you didn't have this on your sheet, but on mine, what's wrong with C? Why is it wrong? Yeah, so do you think this is a person? It's not even zero, zero, is it? It's actually t zero, 25. But what do you think this person thinks has to happen? Has to go through the corner. Has to go through the corner. That's what they've said. Now, actually, if I drew this one correctly, right, there is a chance, well, even mine's not very good, I've done it. This line actually could go closer to zero, zero. But it's got nothing about zero, zero. It's got nothing about the corner of the graph or anything like that. Uh, it's about representing the data. So um, your answer to this question, right? Sorry. Slow. Well, the answer to your question, do you have to go from zero, zero? No, is the answer. Okay, there is only one point eventually your line goes. So, uh, do all lines the best fit? No, they don't. Unless zero, zero is a point in your data set, you don't have it. Right, what do you, how do you find it difficult? What's difficult about drawing a line the best fit? And you're not allowed to say because I haven't got text and I read it. Right? You're just assuming you should. It's more about the actual act of doing it. What's difficult about making a decision? A couple of you have already talked about it. Yeah, and um, so what makes it, what, why was uh, C more difficult, for instance? Yeah, because they're so spread out, you're not really sure, right? What are you going to say? Someone else, yeah. When the points are spread out, it's difficult. Like, I've drawn it, but there's more points underneath, right? It looks denser underneath than above. Now, is that a problem? Yeah, maybe my line should be a little bit down, and it would affect my prediction. Uh, but I've kind of gone with the act, like my decision here, I've gone with the outside shape and then drawn my line. So that's where we would need a more mathematical approach. Is it about having the same number of points above and below, or is it something else? That's what we should look at. Okay. Then, of course, there's the problem where if some part of it's straight and part of it's not straight, what do you do then? Um, have to make that decision. Okay. We are then looking at finding the equation. The reason is, is because, do you all know how to make a prediction using a line of best fit? We did it with one of the questions about someone that took a maths test and looked at the second maths test, blah, blah, blah. Right? How do I use a, a line of best fit to predict? No ideas yet? We'll look into that. 
But if I asked you for the equation of a straight line, I know you've all done this, right? My, the minimum question I'm going to ask you is what's the score outside here? Yeah. What's the, how do I set up the equation of a straight line? What should it look like, the equation? You know, what's the general form of an equation of a straight line? Y equals So in general it would be Y equals M X plus C. Remember that? Where M is the slope, C is the y-axis intercept here, and remember doing the rise over run thing? Yeah. yeah. So we can do that with a straight line. Now, I'm not going to go into that, do we? We'll take it step by step. On the decimal, okay, uh, on the teams, I've put a decimal to make, uh, so you have already looked at it. It asks you, it's a bit of manipulation, you can go on, you can click, um, I think, Put a link on. If it asks you for the code, that's the code. And you're going to do a bit of manipulation. It asks you to decide where the line of best fit goes. And then it gives you the equation and asks you to use the equation to make it. So we're going to start with that point. Okay? Uh, because you actually have to do some dragging of points to make the line do the fit that you see. It gives you the equation, which is nice. And then you can look at so that's Microsoft Teams, our team, I put that on there this morning. Um, link, you can see it. I know you can because Jeremy's already got it up and running. So access that and have a look at the solution. Okay. Through it quickly. All right. Uh, you can add anything to notes or anything you might want to take. So everyone looking at my screen? Okay, so here are, so I'm in student view, so I don't know how much option I've actually got. So we've got to imagine that I'm putting a line of best fit. So I'm imagining it's going through somewhere. I could even, if I like, like you're doing with your ruler, I could just put it up against my screen and go, where, where is it? Okay, so I might actually myself, and I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong, I'm going to say I think it, goes, it would go through C if these were options for another point. Uh, explain my thinking. Well, that's just a bit like, that's how I think the, the, the trend goes. I, I don't think it's going high enough for B because there's not many points up that high. I'm trying to stay closer to the, whatever it is, it's, as long as it makes sense, it's not wrong, okay? Um, then, this one was causing a bit of confusion. Well, imagine I have drawn a line that goes through. This point here, A, B, C, well, I'm at C, is when X is at 15. It's then asking, well, imagine I, I did the same thing, but I put an A, B, C, D, E, but at 100 instead. So that's all the way off the edge of the screen. I'd have to really scale up for that. But how high do I think it is? Right, so if I go through, it's going up at any methods. Did anyone have any methods for what they did? You must have had some reason to do what you did. AJ? Say again. Oh, we haven't got there yet, then. Well, that, the whole point was to work out the difference. Here's my method, just in case you didn't really have one, it was just a guess. I think that going, I think the line goes from about starting at, let's say, 2 and goes through C. So it's gone up from 2 to 5 in the space of 15. That means every 15, it's going up 3. That's my estimation, yeah? Every 15. So for every 15, it goes up 3. Can you work it out? 
how how many lots will it have gone up if it's every 15 it goes up three how do you work it out So zero at two, at 15 it's gone to five, another 15, 30 it's gone up, another three is eight. All right. How far do you think it goes up to 100? How much? And how did you work that out? Okay. 33, so should we just say 34? 33, 34, that's, that's what I guess at. All right. That's my method, so let's just put 33 or 34, submit and explain. Okay, here's the option for picking way lines. So I've gone a, I, I thought, what about two, going through C, here you go. That's what I think. What do you think? What, should, what do you think of my line? Think it's any good? Rubbish? Needs improving? What do you think? No opinion? Can't even give me a point. Yeah. Oh, thumbs up. Okay. Back to our online. Thumbs up. You loved that, didn't you? You didn't have to say a word online. Thumbs up. Okay. We're happy. Um, here's the line. How did you decide on that line? Well, I think we've already talked about that. Kind of goes to, I think maybe it could be a bit lower, but I'm happy at the moment. All right. Now, this is the equation of my line. Okay, now I hope you, have you all got past this stage now? So this is, if I have this line, it has told me, I have not worked it out, you will have to work it out eventually, but not for the moment. It's told me that y equals um, 0 0.136 times whatever the x coordinate is, plus 1.974. Very accurate, lots of decimal places going on there. Are you going to get this? Um, so what can I do? I predicted 100 would be at what value? 33. So I'm going to check by using my equation. So it's telling me that y equals 0 0.136 multiplied by my x value, which would be, I want to know, is 100 plus 1.974, and it will tell me whether it's 33 or I'm wrong. You tell me, work it out. You've all got computers, you've all got calculators, I've not. Work it out for me. What is 0 0.136 multiplied by 100 plus 1.974? I can see lots of people not bothering. Please don't look around at other people to do work for you. Try and do it, you don't get there first, that's fine. I'm hoping for somewhere around 33. Have we got that bit wrong? And we might have been completely wrong. What? 15.57. Okay. Now that means my, however we worked out it was going to be 33, completely wrong. Way off. Okay. Way, way off. But this is a mathematical approach. So what that means is whatever this graph is about, this equation helps me much better than trying to just randomly pick numbers. And that's what we need to get. Okay, does that make good sense? And why we're doing our lines yesterday? Now for those of you that got onto residuals, that's the mathematics behind it, how it actually is done. All right? You won't have to do that at this stage, but you'll at least understand where it comes from. Okay? Recess? Have a good one.